cause and there's certainly not much time for climate change. There's no question about what it is that our generation has to do and how we're going to be remembered. And so uh, there's nothing intrinsically more stupid or more useless about us. The only question is whether we give it a go or not. Ten years ago today, my film, The Age of Stupid, launched at its green carpet premiere in a solar-powered cinema tent in London's Leicester Square. Age of Stupid stars the late Pete Postlethwaite as one of the last people living on the devastated world of 2055, looking back at us now and asking, Why didn't we save ourselves when we had the chance? At the premiere, Pete confronted the then climate change minister, Ed Miliband. If you commission a new dirty coal power station, I promise to return to Her Majesty the Queen the OBE that I was given in 2002. Ed went on to actually change UK coal policy. And then, in collaboration with The Guardian, we launched 1010, which asked everyone, individuals, schools, football teams, the government, to cut 10% of their emissions in a year. So things were looking quite promising back in 2009, but how have we got on since? Did we get ourselves off the path to the catastrophic future depicted in the film? To find out, I'm going to catch up with some of the stars of Age of Stupid. We could have saved ourselves, but we didn't. First stop, a shed in a back garden in Oxford to meet climate author Mark Linus. So we have to act now to stop something happening in the future. If we wait until the full temperature effects are already upon us, then it's far too late to stop. If you remember one single number above all else, make it two degrees. Crucially, to keep the temperature rise within two degrees, this point of stabilisation needs to be at around 2015. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mark. Hi. You all right? You're even wearing the same shirt. No, it's slightly threadbare, but it is the same one. I remember long discussions here in the shed about how bad are we going to make the future. What temperature rise have we already had? We've already got one degree. We've got one degree. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, so what this, happened? well, this is the emissions yeah. curve, right? So now we're back on this line. Yeah. And where are we heading then? And yeah. we're heading to, you know, four, five, six, seven degrees. Yeah. Which is, I mean... The uh, end. Well, beyond the end. <laughs> if it's possible, <laughs> is it possible to get something worse than the total collapse of civilization and the apocalypse? Yeah. Uh, whatever it is, that's, that's the path that's, that's heading to. That's the path we're currently on. Okay, but that yeah. does depend on continuing to increase emissions. You said we mustn't go over 2 degrees, now you're saying it's 1.5, so presumably this is, this is even Yeah, so this is, this is even steeper. Not just than it was, but yeah. it's because we haven't done anything. And it's not also it's also not 80%, so we have to cross this line of neutrality. Right, of net, which net means zero what? zero by 2050. Mm -hmm. And after that point, we then have this, we only go carbon negative, so we have to start removing all the carbon from the atmosphere that we've emitted over the last few decades. So maybe the good news is that we are not past, at the moment, we're not past tipping points which make the situation uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. It's still up to us how much we continue to emit. Yeah. How's that feel? Good news? Search. Visible impacts of climate change leading up to 2010. The original film also features the oldest mountain guide in France, Fernand Perrault, who'd witnessed the Alpine glaciers slowly vanishing during the course of his long life. Donc le glacier il a fondu de 7 à 10 mètres cette année. Wow. Et là il va encore fondre hein, avec le beau temps. I went back to Chamonix and asked Fernand, now aged 95 but still skiing, how much more has the glacier melted? Je pense qu'il y a environ euh, 60, 70 mètres d'escalier en plus. One of the most popular characters in the film is larger-than-life Indian entrepreneur Jay Wadia, who's trying to open up low-cost flying to ordinary Indian people. You know, in the year 2005, I mean, you know, having an elite class who can fly in a country of a billion people is ridiculous. First flight. The first there. ever flight, I was there. Yeah. He had just one plane then, flying to four... Four destinations. Four destinations, was, and yeah. now 24 domestic and international. It's now flying outside. The is hugely successful. I would call that a huge success. So Jay's business has gone global, meaning many more Indian people can now go on holiday like we in richer countries have done for decades. But as flying is the most carbon intensive form of travel, this is yet more bad news for climate change. It is our fault. After years of debate, some of the world's top scientists have concluded... Unequivocable is the word they use. Human activity is... Contributing to changes in our Earth's climate. And that issue is no longer 
up to debate. Age of Stupid also stars Piers and Lisa Guy, who are trying to go carbon neutral on their farm in Cornwall. In his day job, wind farm developer Piers was waging a battle to build 16 wind turbines in a field in Bedfordshire, but he was up against fierce local opposition trying to stop or at least limit his project. Well, the problem really is that this is one of the least windy sites in the country. What it normally always comes down to with wind farms is aesthetics. You know, everything else is basically put together to try and back up the ultimate thing, and the ultimate thing is they don't want to, to spoil their view. But I'm a bit concerned about the uh, low-level noise as well. Yeah, I feel really, really fucked off with it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you must be feeling the same as me. It's just, I mean, how long have we got? So we're back at Airfield Farm, 12 years since we last filmed here. And what everybody's always asked me since the film came out, did Piers finish that wind farm or not? Yeah, and the answer's yes. <laughs> and here it is. Wow. Yeah. You did it. They exist. 13 years hard labour to get three turbines up. Yeah. Beautiful. Symbols of hope. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, more than symbols, because they're actually producing. They're actually doing it, that's true. <laughs> Very simple, really. They probably actually did the installation of this. You know, it probably only took them three days. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's really fast. Symbolic of the whole problem, isn't it? We've got the technology, we've got the land, we've got the resource, the wind. Correct. We've just got to do it. Yeah, you could do it very rapidly if, yeah. um, if you had a will. Yeah. You know, Brexit's rather sucked the oxygen out of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, we just haven't had the right focus um, and we really need to get back to it because it's not getting any better. I mean, today it's almost summer weather here in February, yeah. which is no surprise at all. No. I mean, well, that's the sort of thing that happened was a new record. It was the hottest day in winter ever in Britain, yeah. yesterday. Yeah, very nice, but it's yeah. a terrifying prospect. I find it terrifying, and, yeah. And yeah, I, my worry I think now is, I really feel that it's possible that we've, it's too late. Throughout our history, the deal was, we left the world in a better place than we found it. That was progress, the wheel, the rule of law, penicillin. It was our covenant to our children and grandchildren. Governments will only go as far as the population demands, and that means mass protest on an unprecedented scale. Is it too late, or is there any hope? We are finally starting to see the beginnings of the popular uprising George dreamed of. But at the same time, charred earth as far as the eye can see. We're talking about instant frostbite. Three of the hottest years on record. I think something's happening, something's changing, and it'll change back again. Wildfires will grow in intensity, costing billions in damages and lives lost. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. into the machine guns. We do this again and again. You know, we, we, even our own children, we are prepared to sacrifice for our own self-interest. It's an extraordinary thing. But when I say we, actually, it's not we as society as a whole. You're not like that, I'm not like that. It's the bloody psychopaths who govern our nations. Do you remember what you said in I just Stupid? No, no, I don't remember what I said a moment ago. <laughs> I'll remind you, basically you said we need a revolution. How do you think that's going 10 years later? Well, at last, I think we're getting one. The immediacy of what we're facing hadn't appealed to people's minds. Yeah. 
life support. This is our life support system that we're talking about. And we're ripping it up. But as of today, we've got home. As of today, we're not ripping up anymore. Okay, yeah. We stopped ripping home. it up right now right. and here. Well, I mean, this is, this is just so exciting because we, we're seeing, you know, a global youth movement. Well, it's important to do it because, like, if I don't, then I'm not going to have a very nice future, I guess. Oh,